In Full Zoom is presented by Calvo Enterprises, Inc. and IT&E. Off day, everyone, and welcome to In Full Zoom. I'm Nestor Lecanto, and this week we're going to talk about power, specifically how the Guam Power Authority is uh, contracted, uh, the Guam Ukudu Power, who has contracted um, Pacific uh, uh, Unlimited uh, to move heavy equipment from the port to the Ukudu site. And let me start by introducing uh, Tritsi Lumtiako, who is the acting general manager of the Guam Power Authority. We have uh, Tyler Montanani, who is a spokesperson for the uh, du Dusan Ukudu uh, Transportation Project. Larry Lumtiaku is the vice president of Pacific Unlimited, the trucking company that will be hauling all of that heavy equipment. And uh, John Tower, Hightower rather, I'm sorry, is the owner's engineer and site manager for Guam Ukudu, um, the uh, power uh, plant company. All right, let me start with you, Tracy, because um, I wanted you to get you. I wanted to get you to explain to um, the viewers and the residents of Guam um, just how important uh, the uh, Guam uh, Ukudu power plant is, uh, and how, um, despite um, you know what we're going to be talking about uh, a little bit uh, later about um, the the transportation issues, <laughs> the traffic issues, um, why the the Ukudu power plant is is important. Nestor, thanks for that um, that question, and Hoffa Day, everyone. Thanks for having GPA join uh, this interview. We are really excited, not just for the Guam Power Authority, but also for all of Guam ratepayers about the new Ukudu power plant that is being built um, across the mall in Dededo. That power plant is going to replace the aging Cabris 1 and 2 power plants down in PD. Uh, Cabras 1 and 2 um, power plants have, have been two of our, our trusted, most you know, um, reliable base load generators since the 1970s. Uh, they are currently almost 48 years old, and they are in dire need of being retired. Uh, we, have, we also have base load power plants in PD, specifically units 8 and 9. And they will serve as uh, as backup um, base load or intermediate generation once the Ukudu power plant is online. Um, however, the Ukudu power plant will provide um, the all rate pairs of Guam, the island of Guam, um, approximately 198 megawatts of clean, affordable, reliable energy, and that's very, very important for the future of um, of power supply on Guam. Um, and that can't happen without uh, everybody's support. This is probably one of the largest projects that the island of Guam has seen in a very, very long time. It takes a lot of coordination um, and we are relying on our partners from Guam Ukudu Power, uh, Doosan and, and all of its subcontractors um, to get this project done as quickly uh, and efficiently and of course as safely as possible. So yeah. um, once this power plant is done, Nestor, we're going to be retiring Cabers 1 and 2. Well, um, the Ukudu power plant will become the baseload uh, power plant generated, uh, generation units. And we're going to be adding from there a lot of renewable energy and as well as uh, energy storage batteries. Yeah. And uh, explain what that means to people's um, rates going forward. <laughs> Great question, especially right now. Your rates right now are probably the highest we've seen in a really long time. Um, although I work for Guam Power Authority, I do cringe when my when I get that notice in my email box that my new power bill is here. And I was, you know, hoping that we would have done um, as a family a little bit better in, in conserving energy. Uh, this month, um, we didn't quite hit the mark <laughs> that, that I was hoping for. Our fuel uh, recovery charge, our LIAC charge is really high right now. And that's caused, uh, it's, it's caused by a variety of, of different factors. One is of course, um, everywhere in the world, we're seeing higher than normal uh, oil prices. And whether you attribute that to the Russia-Ukraine war or COVID or just something else, we're feeling it all over the world. The second is um, what I, I might have mentioned but not been specific about our current baseload generation plants. Uh, if you haven't noticed or you haven't heard, GPA recently completed a very, very large project to convert the baseload power plants from uh, something that we, we refer to as RFO or residual fuel oil, very heavy, um, cheap, but not great for the environment fuel. 
and we converted it into uh, to ultra, ultra low sulfur diesel um, or ULSD. And ULSD is typically the, the same fuel that you see at the gas pumps. And that fuel is considerably more expensive than um, RFO, but it's much, much cleaner for the environment. So with those factors, um, with, with you know, the higher, higher oil prices and then using a lot more cleaner fuel, uh, taking away the, um, the more expensive residual fuel oil, it, it really has eclipsed any of the savings that we are seeing from renewable energy right now. So we do have a lot of renewable energy. Um, and, and unfortunately, that means that even if you're using the same amount of electricity in your household or your business uh, that you did, you know, this time last year or the year before, your bill is going to be higher. So we're really, um, really looking forward to the Ukuri power plant. It will burn cleaner uh, fuel, but it's going to burn less of it because it's newer and it has more efficient uh, technologies. Yeah, I think it's all the Christmas lights you've got in your house, Jersey. All right. Um, <laughs> in Full Zoom is presented by Calvo Enterprises, Inc. and IT&E. In Full Zoom is presented by Calvo Enterprises, Inc. and IT&E. All right. Um, <laughs> Let, let me let me move to uh, John, uh, Mr. Hightower there, John. Um, so tell me how about the specific equipment and how big is it and why, how important is it to uh, building the, the power plant? Uh, the equipment's uh, gas turbines, uh, semen variety, uh, STG 800s. Um, they're very fuel efficient. Uh, they're very easy to package. And it would be very easy to transport them. Obviously, uh, one of the issues that we have is transportation, uh, bringing them up from the ports and setting them up here. So it's, uh, it was well thought out and well designed. And it's a good package for what uh, the requirements of the island are at uh, present. Yeah. Um, do you have any measurement dimensions of, of how, how large they are? Uh, roughly 20 meters long, 15 meters tall approximately 85 tons for the gas turbines, 60 plus tons for the transformers. Larry can correct me if I'm wrong. He knows better than the mentions since he has to move it. Um, they're not enormous uh, as relative to a power station. They're not enormous. It'll look quite large rolling down the street along with some of the boiler apparatus. But uh, as far as projects go of this nature, they're actually uh, very manageable. All right. And speaking of moving them down the road, let me move to uh, Larry. Uh, Larry, uh, so Pacific uh, Trucking will be the one that uh, is contracted to move all this stuff from the uh, port to, to the uh, Ukuru uh, site. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how far that is, but uh, tell us a little bit more about um, how you plan to do that. Okay, so um, yeah, um, Pacific Unlimited, DBA Pacific Trucking is um, contracted by Glonet. Uh, which is a uh, gl uh, global logistics company that uh, work with that works with Doosan on a regular basis. This is not their only uh, project going right now. They have several uh, moving uh, right now, and uh, they're they're the ones that bring every part for this uh, generator in or power plant in from different parts of the world, um, and we're the last haul, twelve miles from the port to the Ukudu power plant. Now, what we've done is Pacific Trucking has actually done this before. Um, 30 years ago, we moved the um, Temis 7 into its current location, but we didn't, um, there was no transport over the road. Everything was done from the port um, straight into Temis, which is right diagonal across uh, USO. Uh, we contracted a company called Smithbridge they do heavy hauls uh, throughout uh, New Zealand. They do a lot of heavy moves here on Guam as well. So they're gonna be the ones that are gonna do the, the heavy hauls uh, from the port uh, to Ukru. Uh, they're our subcontractor. And we're gonna do all of the other uh, moves like brake ball containers, uh, things that are 60 ton and below. And they're gonna handle all of the, the bigger stuff. So uh, this is gonna be, uh, a big move. They're using uh, uh, specialized equipment. They're self-propelled uh, modular uh, trailers that they could add or remove axles to uh, safely move the loads over the bridges uh, so that there's no one wheel uh, hitting the, 
the uh, surface of, of the road heavier than it, than than it, all the other ones. So they'll be able to um, shift some of the load over and let one wheel take more load or less load uh, to try to keep um, the wheels um, on the road surface and the bridges um, safely so that we can move it across the road safely. All right, how long is this gonna take? Um, we're estimating, <laughs> uh, barring no, is no issues, uh, right around six hours um, um, to, uh, I'm sorry, 12 hours to move uh, one, one move from the port to um, um, Ukudu. We're gonna be moving something like at one mile an hour. You don't move heavy, oversized, over height, over length loads fast. So you just gotta, you, slow and steady is gonna win this race for us. Yeah, and um, so I, I imagine that you're coordinating with uh, uh, various government agencies such as uh, DPW and uh, GPD? A absolutely. Um, all of the agencies have to get involved, um, including the um, some of the um, uh, uh, television companies to uh, move cables out of the way. Um, we're going to try to... Um, uh, we're going to try to get um, all of the... Um, the uh, traffic um, organized and uh, diverted and, and uh, using alternate routes to, to get this heavy, big monstrosity of a load up to Ukudu. Yeah, okay, Zai, so tell me how this is gonna impact uh, the traveling public, those motors out there trying to get to work or to dinner or to home. Well, I mean, we've taken that into consideration and that's the reason why we're moving everything at night. We're gonna start at 6 p.m. Um, and hopefully be off the road by 6 a.m. at Ukudu. Um, and we're going, we're, we're you know, gonna have detour signs. Um, there, uh, that's, uh, we, we have a, um, uh, a uh, company that's helping us with uh, public outreach so that we could get information to the uh, uh, public. Um, provide them with uh, a traffic control plan, make sure that uh, they know what route we're taking so that they could avoid us. Um, obviously, when we're going down the road, we can't stop traffic. Uh, so there's gonna be lanes that are gonna be open so that uh, the, uh, the um, public can use the road. I'm, I'm sure they're gonna be gawking and looking at what's going on because I mean, it's this is uh, not gonna, have a, um, this is going to be out there. It's not going to be hidden from anybody. Um, so there's going to be a website that they could go to and uh, look up um, when we're doing this, what times we're going to be on the road and uh, exactly uh, what our routes will be so that they could take alternate routes to get away from this traffic. In Full Zoom is presented by Calvo Enterprises, Inc. and IT&E. In Full Zoom is presented by Calvo Enterprises, Inc. and IT&E. All right. Hey, Tyler, can you elaborate on some of the things that you're reaching out to the public about? Yes. So we're hitting all the different areas. Um, over TV, we have radio ads going. Of course, uh, we have our uh radio personalities doing the live reads and let it, getting the message out there as much as we can. Uh, we also have our website, poweronthemove.org. There you can find all the details of the project with the alternate routes. Uh, we'll also have live tracking, so you'll be able to see where the SPMT is. And um, like, for example, say like 6 a.m. to 6.10, okay, it moved this many feet. So we're going to be informing the public as much as possible. And if you're not tuned in over all the different, uh, you know, ways via tech, we have the signs along the major routes. Um, in fact, I just passed one on my way over. So it says in big words, expect traffic delays. And like Larry was saying, these are going to be huge transports, and I know a lot of people are going to want to see this happening, but um, as we've said, it's going to be moving at one mile per hour. Last thing you want is to go there, and then now you're stuck behind this huge thing. So um, again, all information, you can also um, email any inquiries to info at poweronthemove.org, as well as our Facebook page, Power on the Move Guam. 
Okay, so I'm interested in that live tracking so people can can know where, where it's at so they can avoid it. How, they, how do they do that? Is there an app or something? So it's all on our website. Again, poweronthemove.org. We have, um, I again, it has yet to happen. So I still haven't seen the details of that, but um, it's going to be, uh, safety is the biggest priority. We're going to have the schedule there so people can expect where, the trailers will be at at certain areas of the day. And of course, if there's any delay, we'll definitely make sure to get that information out to the public. All right, and Larry, so has the equipment started coming in and when do you expect to start the actual uh, transport? Well, um, we're, still, we're, we're still working on the actual date that we're gonna start moving, but there are there is equipment coming in. Most of the stuff that's come in is break bulk and uh, containers that have already gone to the uh, project site and uh, are, are some of the required um, equipment to be there before these uh, modules come in. Um, but, um, you know, it's got, um, I, don't, I don't have the exact date of when we're gonna be actually moving these uh, out of the port, but we're working on that still. And how 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 long do you imagine it's going to take to move all the equipment? How many how many pieces of equipment are there, and how long will it take to get all of them to to John and his uh, operation? Well, there's there's uh, f- uh, five uh, sequences, and the first sequence is twelve moves. Okay, so you, the S S uh, SPMT is going to be on the road uh, twenty four times roughly because you're going to go up loaded and then you're going to come back unloaded you're still going at one mile an hour whether it's loaded or not that's just the equipment's um uh speed that it it travels um so um you got 12 in the first one i'm I'm trying to add up all these numbers here right now um if i may larry basically it's going to be around 20 moves the first 12, uh, it is at one mile an hour on the way up. However, uh, when the SPMTs are not loaded, they can move considerably faster, considerably being two to three miles an hour. So yeah. this should be a rapid return. But the first initial <laughs> moves, well, <laughs> everything's relative. So the initial moves will be probably 20 to 21 is what we're anticipating. That will take us through into next year. Yeah, and the the containers will stop in mid February, depending on the schedule to start. The as Larry was indicating, but it should run till middle or end of February if all goes to plan. John, is is there a sequence of de- in in the delivery so that you can get the equipment that you need to get started, or do you need it all there at one at and then start when it's all at the location? There is a sequence and the modules have already arrived. So they're sitting in the plant. We're still doing our preparations as far as getting the roadways ready, getting the public aware of what's gonna happen, following our last permits, things of that nature. So all those items are going on in the background. However, the modules have arrived and other equipment is arriving uh, as required. Uh, and as Larry indicated, as soon as they get the green light, they'll start continuously with the moves. Yeah. And have, have you ever um, in, in your career been involved in uh, a, a similar situation where um, necessary equipment had to be transported from, say, a port to to a, a location that's a, a little bit further away? Is that question for me, uh, Nestor? Uh, that's, for, that's for John and you, if, if, you, if, you, if you've also had experience. I know you mentioned the Temis yeah. one, but Temis is right there. This is a, yeah. a, a, a little and, bit closer. <laughs> I mean the 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 weights of the uh, the equipment we were moving were in the hundred tons as well, uh, so uh, we we contracted. This was uh, thirty years ago. Uh, we yeah. contracted a Malaysian company that is uh, known their their name is Megalift, and uh, we brought them in to help us with this move. Another we subbed them to do it, and we handled all of the. Um, the, the work here on the ground. So if the machine was down, we had technicians uh, available to fix them. Um, tires went flat. We, we were there to fix those things. So we, we provide all of the, we provided all of the uh, boots on the ground type work and they brought in all the engineers and specialized equipment. All right. And I wanted to ask about contingencies. For example, there's like uh, heaven, you know, heaven forbid, uh, if there's, uh, you know, an, an emergency and the ambulance, for example, has to get through the traffic or 
what, what are those kinds of contingencies, alternate routes or what, what have you? Yeah, I'm sure that uh, it, uh, it's just going to, it's going to be alternate routes, but of course for the ambulances, there's no alternate route. We need to, we need to find a way to get, um, um, we'll, we'll have one way traffic and, and uh, allow uh, uh, emergency vehicles to get around. Um, we're, we're piloting uh, the uh, vehicles with that, you know, some escorts so that they, uh, people don't get too close to the uh, uh, trailer and, and the modules and the cargo going up there. So uh, we're doing our best to, to keep everything as safe as possible. Um, so uh, the contingency would be uh, people just got to yield to the uh, ambulances and the police uh, to, to get around us. In Full Zoom is presented by Calvo Enterprises, Inc. and IT&E. In Full Zoom is presented by Calvo Enterprises, Inc. and IT&E. And Ty, have you gotten any uh, public feedback uh, so far in, in you know, all of the outreach that you guys have been doing? We just launched our website last week, so we have... Um, we have a good amount of people already subscribing to the website. So when you do that, you'll be able to get those automatic updates. Uh, newsletters are going to be sent out soon as well. So um, it's been good feedback so far. And of course, all of us working together in our own circles, we're doing as much as we can and sending them to all the WhatsApp chats, talking about it with our circles. So the more people know about this, the smoother process it will be. And we just need to let everyone know um, to be safe on the roads and most importantly, to stay as clear from those areas of transportation as much as possible. Yeah, I, I, think, I think it's good to let them know ahead of time. But of course, once it happens, that's when you're gonna start hearing from people. Yeah. So I wanted to wrap up. Uh, we've got about four or five minutes left. I want to wrap up with each of you just to make it an appeal to the public and maybe uh, an explanation of, of, you know, why this is important. Um, and let me start with you, Tritzi. Um, just uh, what would you say to the public as they you uh, to expect the, uh, the this transport of this uh, very important equipment to uh, Ukudu? Thanks for that question, Nestor. Um, I just want to ask all the ratepayers to to please be patient. You know, um, the ratepayers are um, they are our partners uh, at, Gu at Guam Power. It's everything that we do is to benefit the ratepayers. We are in the middle of this huge transformative um, process with energy, and it is our goal to uh, improve the reliability of the energy we deliver to your homes and businesses, um, to make it more affordable, and to make it uh, cleaner and greener. And in order to do that, we need the new Ukuru power plant. We need that in order to add more renewable energy, uh, more energy storage, and you know, just to improve the infrastructure. This is going to be the cornerstone of our, um, our power system on Guam, and it's really, really important. So when you do encounter the, um, the transportation delays or have to take another 20 minutes, and there's traffic because everybody else is taking the detours. Like you said, Nestor, or maybe it was John, or maybe it was Larry. <laughs> no pain, no pain. Um, it's, it's difficult to, um, you know, to have a smile in the middle of traffic when you're late or you didn't expect it. So please, 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 um, you know, take a look at poweronthemove.org. Just like Tyler had said, subscribe to it. Check it out before you go anywhere. Um, plan your week around it. We're sorry about it, but um, it, this is progress. Thanks so yeah. much. Well said, uh, John, you know, everybody's in a hurry, even on a small, relaxed, laid back island as ours. Uh, what would you say to them about how important this equipment is for you? Uh, just going back to what uh, Tracy was saying, it's just part of the future of the island. Uh, it's something that has to be done. Um, as units come down, new ones need to come up and this is more efficient, it saves money. Uh, it can only help in the future. Uh, it's a win-win for everybody. It's just going to be a bit inconvenient for two or three weeks, but other than that, it'd be well worth the price. And uh, Larry, uh, short-term pain, long-term gain uh, as the, the company charged with the transporting all this equipment, what do you have to say to the public? Yeah, I, I, I want to just echo um, what uh, John and Tracy had said. It's, gonna, it's good for the island. Um, it's going to be difficult to uh, deal with the traffic delays, but you know you don't move you don't move huge pieces of equipment uh, fast. It's uh, it's safe to keep them uh, slow 
and uh, just uh, make progress. And uh, I think it's going to be as smooth. It's going to be smoother than what everybody's thinking. Um, you know, maybe for those couple of weeks, few weeks that uh, you just kind of hang out at home and spend more time with each other <laughs> uh, and uh, not 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 go out too much. That's what you I have to say. You know what they're going to say, John? Say one mile an hour. You can't do two or three. <laughs> <laughs> not not with it, that little. <laughs> it's it's got to be it's got to be for safety reasons and and also for um for the equipment too, right? To make sure yes. that it doesn't get damaged. Because I I I I I don't want to ask uh, John what would happen if that <laughs> equipment did, did get damaged or fall off. So, all right, uh, we've got about a minute or so left, uh, Tyler. You're going to get the final word. Uh, this is your chance to uh, once again uh, reach out to the public and uh, give them the message that uh, uh, it, it might be a little um, inconvenient, but in the long haul, it's uh, best for the island. Absolutely. And you know what? It's something that's going to pay off for everyone. Uh, Nestor, again, I just wanted to thank you for having us on this wonderful opportunity. And we hope this isn't the last time and uh, we can come on again and provide further updates as the project progresses. Again, if anyone wants to learn more about Power on the Move, because again, the transport is a whole thing in itself, go on to our website poweronmove.org. Any questions can also be emailed to info at poweronthemove.org. And we also have our Facebook, Power on the Move Guam. All right. Thanks a lot. Uh, Chrissy Limtiaco, uh, John Hightower, Larry Limtiaco, and Tyler Matsunani talk a little bit about, hey, public, you've got the word, you got the heads up. So expect that in the next few weeks to, to last for a few weeks. Um, but it's all important. It's uh, moving very uh, important equipment from uh, the port to Ukudu. And uh, so we can get the power plant construction going and uh, lower your power rates eventually. Thanks for watching, everyone. I'm Nestor Lakanto. We'll see you again next week on In Full Zoom. In Full Zoom is presented by Calvo Enterprises, Inc. and IT&E.